We're continuing. So, uh, so I'm saying what I'm saying is that if Ram understood that this is what we have to look for, we have to look for the Yain Yoshun Shadaz Kainim No Chaimeno. So he went to Yaakov Avinu. And another thing, Yain, what's Yain? Yain is Panemius. Kiyodua Nichnas Yain, Yotza Sod. When Yain goes in, so Sod, Yain brings out Sod. Yain has to do with Sod. Now, you might think that Sod means uh, uh, Kabbalah, what they call learning Kabbalah, like like we had a Makubo was sitting in my apartment uh, two weeks ago, it was, and he started saying, Atbach, this, that's the thing is, Atbach, Aleph, Tez, Beis, Ches, and things, I mean, a very fine yid, a very holy yid, and a tzaddik, and a din nefesh, and he was said something about Atbach, and I don't know what it was, the letters that you changed, the Aleph, the Tez, the Beis, the Ches, but, but that's that love dafke. There, there's certain like I what I call it the plumbing of the heaven. It's different ways the ways how the shefa comes down, which is called atbach. But that's love dafke. That that's what it means. Kabul. I just now saw in the book of Rav, on Rav, one of the books on Rav Steinman that he said the shame the chazan is. And I, I think without, we can know this without the Chazanish also, that he said Kabbalah is Mesholim. Very few people know the Nimsha. I think Moshe Shah also once talked about the Nimsha. He knows the Nimsha. I, I don't know. It, I mean, when you say there's Atbach, or when you say anything, you say ten spheres, there's ten Kochas, there's Chochma, Bina, Daz, different Kochas. But... The, the, this, the fact that there is chokhme. I mean, when, when you want to explain what chokhme means, what bina means, so you talk about how the mind thinks, how how an idea comes to a person. It's all true, but it's all muscle to something in ruchnius that we have no asog of what it is, and the only way that Kabbalah could bring it down to this world was through these words of Chochmah, Bina, and that. The same thing is when you talk about writing the Shem Avaya with Miluyim, you write Yud Kei Vav Kei, you write Yud Vav Dalet, or, or, and then the Hey is Hey Aleph, there's Hey Hey, there's Vav is Vav Aleph, Vav, 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 or whatever, how, a different way, different combinations of how to write the Yud Kei Vav Kei. So, 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 so that's, that's what goes on in heaven, these kind of pipes that, they, that they're this kind of Shem Avai and that kind. It's a muscle to certain Kochas of Ruchnes that, 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 uh, that are there. So they, there's no way to put it into words. And Bechla, Ruchnes is something that, that, that's ab- above the mind. The mind can't grasp. The lace machshova tfisa be cloud says only what it, it, it's uh, you. You can talk about Hashem, but to really grasp what He is, it's impossible. So the same thing. All the ruchnes dikakachos that Hashem created is also not possible to grasp. But the limu dakabole gave us words. In order to be a marshal, a base yad, a handle, that with that we could uh, have a certain uh, idea of these ruchnes dikekachos. That that's but 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 really, what Kabbalah really is is the pnimius of all these. What's the difference? I once asked somebody that learns Kabbalah, somebody in the, in the steeple where I davena about Shuva that he's a Talmud of Moshe Shad. His name is um, uh, uh, Abrams, and I forgot his first name. So, so I asked him, what uh, what difference, do, do you feel a different connection to Hashem, whether the Shem Avai is written with the Milui, which is called Ayan Beis, or the Milui that's called Samach Gimel, or the Milui that's called Beis Nun, do you feel a different connection to Hashem when the Shem Avai is written this way or that way? Of course, he just gave a smile. I don't know. I don't know if he knew what I'm talking about or why I'm talking or what or what got 
me to say that. I, I, he just gave a smile and went on and uh, kept on uh, looking at his Sidra or Rashash. So I said, what, what, what different, did you feel a different connection? But I'm sure that those, like Rab Tzaddik says, the Truma Chavne means those that they, when they have the Kavona, this, this, these words or these words, they're there. They're feeling in a certain ruchnistic state that's called the shame Avaya written in such a melee that the gematria comes out iron base. So that's a certain connection to Hashem, a certain ruchnistic power, a certain spiritual reality. That they feel that and they're there when they say that. And when they say the shame Avaya in a different way, they feel a different spiritual reality. That's what Kabbalah is. When somebody learns Shnayim Ochs in Betalis, and he learns it in a way of Das Kanim, he drinks the Yain Yoshon, and he feels the Nocha Heimenu that this Kanim feel. So he he's, he's connected to Pnimius of, of Yachloku. <laughs> Just think a minute. It's so simple. Shnayim Ochs in Betalis, and each one says, Kula Shali, so the din is Yachloku. What could be more simple than that? That might be, you, you might even think it's the simplest Mishnah in Shas. It's not true. You start thinking, hold it up to the light. Think about the Pnimius. Could it be that one bag it belongs to two people? And yet we give it to two people. And we say both have a shaykh to it. Maybe they picked it up together. Why should you think they picked it up together? It's no vadai brahmai. It's haluka yecholali asemes. Taking an object and connecting it to two people. Tremendous chidushim, tremendous amkis, tremendous pnimius that lies here. One object that, 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 that you don't usually connect it to two people, a beggar, one band. Maybe that's the reason why it says Dafke Schneimachs in Betalis. Why doesn't it say uh, something else? Schneimachs in Bebehemen, let's say Schneimachs in an account. A talis, a begot, is something individual, something a person wears in his own clothes. Why, why, why should it belong to two people? And yet you could take one thing and, and, and split it between two people. Maybe that's the secret of Adam Baum, that you could take a particle and split it in half, and it could make a chorban of a world. And here, and zeluma, zelos, or elukim, that the talis, you could split in half and and give it to two people, and it's Torah's Chaim, and it can bring Chaim to the world. That's called Primis Torah, this feeling. How do you explain it? How do you understand it? Everybody should do it for himself to have his own understanding. And that's what Ephraim went, went to learn from Yaakov. Ephraim understood as much, as much as I went, as deep as I went with my father Yosef. But but there, there's a that the das kainim. I want to hear what the das kainim says, and uh, and 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 that's why he went down to Mitzrayim, to Eretz Goshen. He left his father's house, and he, he must have been young. I mean, if he, it's not so hard to make a chesed that Yosef had the two children, but them, Tovush Nasarov, it says in Posigan, precious me, cake. He gave birth to his wife, gave birth to two children, Nasa and Ephraim, before Nasarov came, which how many snows of sofa were there? There were seven years of sofa and two years of rov. And that's when Yaakov came down to Mitzrayim. And the Menashe and Ephraim were born during the Shnos HaSova, which is seven years. I mean, so how old could he have been when Yosef came, when Yaakov came down to Mitzrayim? Let's say that Menashe and Ephraim were born in the beginning of the Shnos HaSova. It says, Beterm Tovu Shnos HaRov, but you don't know exactly when it was. There were seven years of Sova, and Yosef married Osnas right away, right away, as soon as he became the Mishnah Lomelech Vayakiva. So right away it says, Vayitin uh, Lo, when, when he, after he revealed that he was poser the Chalamus, so it says, 
says, we grow power, shem yosef, tzofnas, paner, we eat los osnas, but he gave him a wife. That was right in the beginning of the Shnos HaSova. So let's say they were born in the beginning. So, uh, so you have seven years of Sova, two years of Rov, that's nine years old. The most, now, when, that means the most Ephraim could have been when when uh, when Yaakov came down to Mitzrayim was nine years old. Now, when did he go to learn by Yaakov? It doesn't say when he went to learn by him, but I mean, I would say he went there in the beginning uh, of, of Yaakov's Tkufa, which is at the age of nine. Okay, we get out of here, maybe ten, a ten-year-old. He goes to learn by Yaakov Avinu. He understood with Ephraim that you have to be Mekabal from Yaakov, the Das Kenim no Chaimeno. He asked, and he was Rogil, Rashi he says, Rogil if Ne Yaakov Betalmud. Interesting is that this whole union of Ephraim sitting in front of Yaakov Inu and learning is mentioned. He was the shliach to go to tell Yosef the Nini of and Davke there, it's mentioned that who was it? It was Ephraim. That's where we know this whole thing. Like there must be some connection between Ephraim telling Yosef that Yaakov was sick and Kilo. Yosef brought his two sons to get a bracha uh, through, through Ephraim. So it must be there's some shaykhs to this Indian. So it could be uh, like we said in the beginning of the talk, this was that he says, Ephraim and Menashe, that they were Yonek, the Koch of Yaakov of Inu, to the next generation. And and all that was in the bracha that Yaakov gave. And the bracha that Yaakov gave came because Ephraim went to tell Yosef, in Chol, and he brought him to get the bracha. So it comes out, this whole bracha of of Yisim Chalakim Kefraim Chimenashe that came through Ephraim sitting in front of Yaakov all the time. So it could be because this Koach of becoming Ephraim of Menashe and being Shvotim, becoming Shivtei Koach, that came because of Ephraim's understanding that you have to sit in front of Yaakov Avinu and you have to get the Das Kenim of Torah, this, this depth that's called Das Kenim. Through that, you can be Yonik, the Koch of Yaakov Avinu. That, that Koch, of course, the generations go down. Every generation is weaker and weaker and weaker than the previous generation. But then it could be, the Nek, or it could be, it says it someplace, that the Nekuda Apnimi is the deepest, the deepest nekuda of a person is connection. Ani a shein of a libi air. That libi air that stays. That part doesn't go down. And if Ram was connected to that part by by learning in front of Yaakov, you know, so he was able to bring Yosef and get that broch of Yisim Chalakim Kefraim Vachim Menashe because, because that Nekuda Apnimis stays from generation that goes from generation to generation until our weakest, weakest generation but we still have that Koch of Yaakov of, you know, in us because deep, deep down inside of us we still have this connection to, to Yaakov of, you know, and all that came from a friend. Interesting is to notice that afterwards by the Golos Mitzrayim, there was a group of people that ran out of Mitzrayim before the time. And they got killed by the police in Yoshua Oret. This is in Dira Yomim, it says this. Yeah, we talked about this uh, in quite a few talks. The Bnei Ephraim were Docha the Kates. Oh, and they were from Bnei Ephraim. So why why did it happen? The Dafka from Bnei Ephraim, this happened. Because they had a certain deep feeling, because since their grandfather Ephraim learned by Yaakov Avinu, and he got this koch of das kenim no menu, and they had a connection of das to the nekuda hapnimis of, of Torah and of Chochmah and of Nishmas Yisrael. Rabbi Kaplan, we're taking a break. 